As far as the first question comes, what is Sharia? Sharia, it is a legal system based on the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. So when we say that, do you follow the Sharia? We mean to say, do you follow Quran and Sahih Hadith? So if you ask me a ruling that what is according to the Sharia? That can we have alcohol according to the Sharia? What are you asking me is the rule laid down by Almighty God defined in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. The sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So if you say, what is the ruling according to the Sharia? So I say, okay, that can you have alcohol? So I said, the Sharia says alcohol is prohibited. I may give a reference. Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90. So Sharia means following the legal system of Islam based on the Quran and the authentic sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Sometimes when people think of the Sharia law, the very first thing that comes to their mind is what? Chopping hands. <laughs> right? It's very, very important. I'll give you one analogy, by the way. Very simple analogy. Suppose if men from Mars, if they come down now, is it men from Mars or women from Mars? <laughs> okay, people from Mars, if they come down, and if they ask me the question, you know, Dr. Sabil, uh, what is the U.S. Constitution? And if I tell them that the U.S. Constitution kills people by lethal injection, by hanging, by electrocution, and that's all I say, and they leave. Would I be doing justice to the U.S. Constitution? I'm just mentioning to them only maybe like 0.5% of the breadth and the beauty of the U.S. Constitution. In the same way, the, the punishment or the penal system in the Sharia law, there are no less than only 15 or less passages in the Quran that speaks about the punishment system. Every country has punishment system. There has to be checks and balances. The rest of the Sharia law speaks about respecting the neighbors, honoring your parents, being good to our fellow Americans, being good to the minorities, gaining education, enhancing the society, and joining good, forbidding evil, giving charity. All of those things are part of the Sharia law. Me smiling at you, I'm I'm practicing the Sharia law. So in fact, those who fear that Sharia law is going to come here, Sharia law came here a long time ago. In the US Constitution that speaks about the justice and the equality, that we say that's part of the Sharia law. Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that an Arab is no superior to a non-Arab. A non-Arab is no superior to an Arab. A white person is no superior to a non-black uh, and black is no superior to a white. All, all of your children of Adam and Adam was made from dust. That is part of the Sharia law. It speaks about equality. So it's very important for us to know what Sharia law is and not. Maybe just in 20 seconds. Sharia law is not. Sharia law is against oppressing minorities. Sharia law is against forced conversions. Sharia law is against suppression of women. There's nothing to be worried about. It's nothing that's scary about the Sharia. Every single religious uh, system has its own laws, its own ethics, its, no, its own norms. Uh, observant Jews uh, follow the halakha. Uh, they eat kosher. Well, I mean, Muslims have an equivalent where they will follow the Sharia. They're going to eat halal foods. And in fact, uh, the Sharia is a personal set of laws that Muslims basically live their lives by. And it is true that the Sharia tells us uh, what to eat and what not to eat. It tells us uh, how to dress. It tells us uh, what is permitted in transactions and what is not permitted. That we cannot be unjust. We cannot uh, take advantage of the poor. We cannot do this. We cannot do that. We can, we're also encouraged to give charity. We're encouraged to be generous. We're encouraged to be merciful. So the Sharia is a set of personal laws and values. Now some people bring up certain laws of the Sharia that might have been applied in Islamic caliphates uh, some centuries ago, uh, such as the cutting off of the hand or this or that and there's no denying that elements of the Sharia did discuss national laws because uh, unlike uh, for example uh, many other religions unlike for example Judaism that has not had a, uh, a Jewish state for a long time uh, Muslims have had states for most of their uh, existence and these states did judge by the laws of the Sharia and therefore the Sharia did discuss issues of a national level issues of the penal code what to do with uh, with thieves with uh, what to do with uh, highway robbers and the, the laws that were enacted based on the Sharia were laws that Muslim societies did live by. Now, we as American Muslims or any uh, Muslims living in Western lands, we understand that these laws are laws that apply in an Islamic state and in the 
as American Muslims, as Western Muslims, Canadian Muslims, uh, Muslims living in Western lands, we wish to practice the Sharia in our personal lives. And that means we want to live in a certain ethical lifestyle, uh, a certain morally upright lifestyle. I wish to eat uh, the food that God has made permitted for us. We have a set of personal laws that we cling to, but that's our personal belief. Even within our own community, if a Muslim chooses not to practice the Sharia, well, I know plenty of Muslims like that. What are you going to do about it? That's their business. If they come to me as a scholar, as a, as a cleric, I will tell them, this is the law of God. You should try to apply it. You should try to practice it in your personal life. But if they uh, refuse to do so, that's their business and it's not my business to force it on them. If this is the way that we see this within the Muslim community, within our own mosques, how about outside of our mosques? The bottom line is that the Sharia is a set of personal laws that Muslims who choose to do so will apply in their daily lives. The Sharia tells us to be merciful, compassionate, to be God-fearing. The Sharia tells us to give our charity, to pray on time. The Sharia tells us to live according to what we believe are the laws of God. 